what type of raining you need heavy rain pouring rain all kind of rain we have in sri lanka these days for last seven days i think 24 7 almost 24 7 heavy rain pouring rain all kind of rain in sri lanka so today looks like a sunny day but i don't know how long it will go but hopefully today is a sunny day by the way i like raining i like Continuous when it recording will now start there. when it's raining i like to like uh, read a book with the hot tea i really like to do it <laughs> okay so there was a topic i wanted to talk to you for some time but for various reasons i missed it and i think today is the right time to talk about that so that is what is the access token and what is the JWT token? Is it both same and or different? And when to use what? Here's the thing. So there is no very clear definition between access token or a bearer token or a JWT token. This name always used interchangeably and technically that is not wrong too. So, I mean, we can use like that. Here's the thing. So JWT token, is also a access token so someone use access token word for the jw token that is not wrong because that's technically true but usually we say access token for a bearer token because bearer token and jw token quite different and also again some people use bearer keyword in front of a jw token and so that's what i said it's very cloudy the difference between these things so it's nothing wrong by using this way or the, that way but it's easy if you know what it is and how to use that okay so there are two type of token in general one is bearer token and other one is jot also called as a jw token also json web token so these tokens work differently act differently and behave differently right so let's see what are those so access token also or a call bear let's say call a bearer token so it's, it's less confused right so if it's a bearer token we usually use a bearer keyword in front of the token right that's same as a, like a check you use with the bank if you have a check it doesn't make any sense until you go to the bank and the bank uh, authorize the check and give the money back to you so that's how the process will understand this flow give the check to the bank then bank authorize the check and give you the money right but if someone give a cash directly to you, you don't have to go to the bank because they already have cash with you. Or if you, someone give their credit card to you, it's illegal, but you can use it without uh, especially going to the bank, right? So bearer token means the token, which like usually is 32 or 64 length, uh, it, it different and it can be even 16, that, that doesn't matter. And this is a token and we use a bearer keyword in front of that. So what it means, this token don't have any information, it's just an arbitrary, some text, right? So this token, you have to give it back to the, like, let's say the front end has a, a bearer token and the front end send the bearer token to the service. Then service need to contact authorization server or, or auth server to validate this token. It's same as the check to the bank, right? You get the check, you go to the bank, you have a bearer token, you go to the authorization server or auth server to validate the token so once you validate the check the bank validate the check they give the money back to you so likewise when the auth server validate your token it return you what user profile what user whose username who is this user whose token this is to whom this token is issued to and what is his profile what he can do what it can do like permissions and all those things it return from the auth server okay so that's how it works remember you contact the auth server and the auth server give the details back to you right token don't have anything in other hand jot or a jw token carrying all the information within it right to whom this issued when issued when to expire and what are the permission what are the roles what he has access to everything carrying in inside a token what is the advantage or the disadvantage okay let's see this someone we issued a token uh, access token and JWD token both at 9 a.m. Okay. 
9:05 a.m. we decide we want to we say okay this to, this user is doing something wrong we need to invalidate we need to restrict his access to the system if it is access token you easily can remove the token from the auth server so then next time when the uh, it contact the auth server auth server say no you cannot access the system why because bearer token every single time it required to talk to the auth server unless otherwise it's caching within the service itself right you should we don't cache auth response but you can uh, unless otherwise you cache you have to talk to the auth server let's say so 905 we can easily uh, revoke the user from the system but if you, if you use a JWT or a JW token, when you issue to 9, 9 a.m., let's say you have span to like 30 minutes valid time, so token will expire till 9.30. There is no way in a standard procedure, there is no way you can revoke this user from the system because you already issued the token to the system, uh, user and the user, when the user submit the token to the service, service will not contact auth server right service service going to validate token its own so there is no direct way you to invalidate this token and also there are other workarounds we use like a blacklist token some kind of a thing but what i'm going to say is there is no uh, direct way so workaround we do for this is we keep this access token the bearer token sorry we keep this jot validity period to minimum as possible like kind of a 15 minutes or uh, so right but again don't keep the token by the time for five minutes it doesn't make any sense you then it give other load uh, token generation which is adding more latencies but generally usually you can keep for like 15 or 30 minutes ideally but if it is a bearer token you can immediately revoke the token and so that mean uh, access token is better than the jw token then why people use the jw token no it's not like that so this is the second problem okay so let's assume you have a service one service with the uh, 10 tps right and then you have t 10 tps mean 10 transactions per second then you have a 10 services like that that means your system carrying uh, 100 tps 10 tps each 10 services right so now your auth server required support for 100 tps why because all these 10 services though even individually they take the 10 tps all those services go and talk to uh, your auth server to validate the token in the same time so your auth server has to support for 100 tps right now can we scale this yeah you can but then again you need to think in a different way to share the token among all of the auth servers right because let's say you have five instances of auth server to balance the load to handle this 100 uh, tps right you can have a five instances yeah that's totally fine but the problem is if the instance a issue the token then instance b should be able to recognize the token for that you need to uh, have a shared like kind of a ready so some sort of a shared memory or a distributed caching or a, even database if the database is slow there are so many things to handle so many things to think if you really want to load balance the auth server right so that so those are the things you need to learn right now you will say, yeah, how we give the sign out feature? Yeah, you give the sign out feature with the JAT. What you usually do is the front end, they remove the token from their cache and the local storage or um, wherever they store it. But if you still use the token in the back end, there's a high chance that token is going to work. Talk to you soon. Stay safe. Take care.